In this present time, we are all experiencing circumstances that target our dominion. So today, we will learn how to pursue and recover all that the enemy tries to do in John 10 and 10. For we know that John 10 and 10 says, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said one thing. He said that I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So today, we will go to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. I'll give you some time when you have it. Say amen. Okay. Let us read. I'm reading from the New International Version. And it says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them. God said, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So today's topic is recover by faith. Look at somebody you know that needs healing and say recover by faith. Look at somebody you know that needs deliverance and you've been praying for them. Tell them recover by faith. That person that you've been praying for, that person that you've been crying for, listen, you can cry, but realize that God has given you the authority to recover by faith. To recover is to return to a normal state of health, mind, or strength. And before I go further, if we want to recognize the original intent of God, God's wanted us to do good and no, not evil. But see, when we become to be flesh-like and we allow the, the temptations to move us to a place where we, where we choose from our flesh, we choose something that God doesn't intend for us. What am I talking about? Well, in Genesis, it says that he made everything in how many days? And each day, he said, and it was good. He didn't say it was good and evil. He said, and it was good. And he told Adam and Eve that you can eat out of everything. As a matter of fact, it was a plant-based diet that he wanted them to eat from because he said, what I want you to eat is only something that can reproduce. He said, I don't want you to eat something that's going to kill you or die. But I want you not only to reproduce, but I want you to eat something that's going to reproduce. And so what we have to realize is the original intent was God wanted us to be good. But when Eve was tested by the serpent, he took her to a place where she chose her flesh over the spirit. And so what we have to realize is when we choose the flesh over the spirit, we are no longer in the original intent that God wanted us to be. God wanted us to have great health. God wanted us to have a stable mind. But when we start to be unstable, it's usually because we are leaning on something that's not the everlasting arm. And so when we realize that our strength isn't where it needs to be, we have to examine. And we have to realize that God didn't create me to be in the place that I'm in. Sometimes we endure sufferings that we can't control. But even then, he didn't, he didn't allow it for you to become distracted. He didn't allow it for you to, to give up. He allowed it so that he can build your faith on things eternal. According to Psalm 46, God is a very present help in the time of trouble. So Father, right now, we pray that you would reveal to us the tools that break every chain that's trying to bind us in insanity because we know that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again but not getting a result that we like. We want to see healing but we won't go to the doctor. We want to be delivered but we don't want to throw up. Take your time, Williams. Yes, sir. We want to be saved. We want to be saved but we don't want to read the word. Salvation comes through the word of God. Yes. Salvation comes through the word of God. Yes. And so if we don't take time yes. to examine ourselves and evaluate yes. that this is something that God needs to help me with, not something I need to help myself with, because right. that's where we fall short. 
come. God says, I will be a very present help in the time of trouble if you seek me. So, Father, I pray that as we go further, you will give us the tools to unlock the mystery. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, so according to 1 Samuel 30, if we really examine what's going on here, David was leaving a place. The place he left was with the Philistines. They were headed up to make a move. And as they were headed up to make a move, one of the guys who was intimidated by David said, hey, why are we taking him up here with us? Why are we taking him up here to do our work? And the reason why he said this was because David had such a presence, not only of intimidation, but the glory was on him so much to where if people couldn't understand what he was flowing through, they became jealous of. Well. And so there was a guy who was saying, we don't need him coming with us. Isn't this the same David that they, that they said Saul slayed his thousands, but David slayed his tens of thousands. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like, man, ain't no way we can take this person with us because if, if, if he's still serving the same God, why wouldn't he turn on us? And so we see where David's in a place. David don't even really understand what's going on until it happens. He, he's walking and all of a sudden they're like, David. The other guy said, David, hey, David. All right, all right. He said, yes. He said, we respect all that you have done. We respect everything. Uh, check this. When people start talking to you and start saying, you know, we respect this. All right. Come on, and they're trying to dismiss you. I'm getting to it. Come they said, David, we respect all that you have done. Yeah. We have to let you go back to your family. Because where we're going further, uh, we feel like you need to go back to your family and take care of your family. And so not knowing, they did not know, they didn't know, he didn't know, not knowing that what they were doing was still in alignment with what God was doing. So they head back, David and his, and his men, because David and his men were helping other men. He was so powerful that other, other armies and soldiers wanted them to help them. And so after this, he was like, what did I do? What did I do to deserve this? Why do, why do I have to go back? What's going to be going for? But he obeyed. He went anyway. So he was headed back to Ziklag. And when he got to Ziklag, he, he went back, you know, expecting to see his, 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 his wife, his children. The, the, the men were expecting to see their wife or children. They get there and the city is burned. No sign of kids. No sign of, of children. And the guys freak out. They cry. All of them cry so much. The scripture says they cried so much that they wept that they couldn't cry no more. The tears were gone. All of a sudden, his men wanted to jump against him. They, they, they tried to, they was like, they're coming up with ideas. You know, maybe we should stone him. Maybe we should attack against him. We following him and all our kids and our, and our wild stone. But watch what happens. David put on the epic. He, he, he told one of them, he said, go give me the epic. The epic back then, it was a garment that the priest put on to, 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 to recite to God and, 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 and question God, to receive the presence of God. It, was, it had the same presence as the Ark of the Covenant. And so he put on this garment and he asked. Sometimes we don't get nothing because we don't ask God for it. Shall I overtake? 
God said, pursue, and you will recover all without fear. Get this. God is getting ready to bless you with the dominion and authority that you're going to recover without fear. And so after he heard God, not only did he hear him, but he moved. See, sometimes we also don't see the progress because we're sitting in a place. We're sitting and we're not moving. How can you get a new job if you don't put in an application? God bless me with a new car. How you gonna make the payment? So when we ask God for recovery in these moments, we have to realize when he speaks, we gotta move. And so he moved by faith. And as a result, David and his men not only conquered, but everything they lost, they got back. And I forgot to say this. Thank God because they didn't kill the children. They didn't kill the, the, the women. And God allowed this by design so God could show how evil the enemy feels he has you cornered. He says, I still have the strength, the power, the might, and the GPS to guide you to the place where you're going to take back what the devil showed. How do I know? Because about a month ago, me and my wife, we went to Texas to visit family before all of this COVID stuff happened. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm going to release it. I was headed there in the same way that David was headed. So we, we had went, enjoyed ourselves, and on the way back, you know, David went somewhere, came back. On the way back, the truck stopped. On the freeway, I'm trying to press my accelerator, and it wouldn't move. It stopped at a certain point, and then I couldn't even get over like 20 miles per hour. I said, God, how in the world do you expect us to get back? Yes, we have a little money, but it's just not enough for us to be able to try to get this and get that. And, and, and so I'm, I'm uh, only to find that God was setting us up for a blessing. You see, we were headed back, and as we were moving, once again, we were headed to a place we expected to be, only to find out that that where we were going mm -hmm. had been depleted and cut off. In a, in a sense where we, we, we had to seek God in another realm, yeah. seek God in another way. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, yeah. when, when we found out, man, this truck broke down, we started getting frustrated. Uh -huh. yeah. we, we, we were like, how in the world? We got these kids in the back of the truck. How in the world? Are we going to make it do this? When we had all of these thoughts, one of the main things that I thought of, and my wife actually agreed with me, we might as well give up this truck. We too far away from, we about 800 some miles away. Uh, I may got that wrong, but we, we so far away. How in the world we expect to get church, tow this thing or whatever? We, we don't have the money for it. We might as well get a rental, drive back, and just try to get another vehicle. But God made, God, God spoke to us. Uh, 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 God spoke to us. And, 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 and even though we, we, we were feeling like that, something funny happened. In the midst of us feeling like that, we put on the spirit. We, we asked. We, we, we didn't say, okay, we're just going to do this. We stopped and said, well, hold up, let's at least try. Let's ask. You see, you see, a lot of times the soul man tries to control the spirit man. And a lot of times you got to put that spirit man back in check. Sometimes we get to a place where we can't control the spirit man because we've allowed the soul to guide us. But sometimes when, when, we, when, we, when we haven't gone out on the deep end and when we haven't taken that step, had we just said forget it, it probably would have gotten worse. We probably would have had a bill. We still have been trying to pay. But, but what I realized is we had to step back and breathe. Sometimes you got to step back and get into a quiet place. You got to say, okay, God, I see what's happening, but how do I get through? When we asked God that, there were certain resources that we connected to that helped us think about it in a different way. Hey, got to be accountable. You got this vehicle. Yes, you can give it up, but it's still going to be under this lead. 
Leave. You didn't get this vehicle from them just so you can just say, well, it's messed up. I can go back to you. No, because you signed and you said you were going to take care of it. Now, I know sometimes, we, you know, we have our moments, but this was something God was not going to let us just get out of. And so after, after we heard the advice, we moved and we made a phone call. And, and through all of this, after our acting, listen what happened. Not only was our vehicle towed for free to the nearest place, but I'm talking about a $2,000 payment that was paid in full, and it wasn't us. God made a way when we didn't. When we would have had to take a week and a two and three weeks to, to put up the money, God had somebody that was a ram in the bush and said, since you have moved forward in making the request, I'll take care of it. And so we have to understand this when we even evaluate our own situations. You see, sometimes you might be headed to the doctor and you might find a bad report. So you might cry, you might weep, and you might mourn. All of a sudden, the devil's telling you you're gonna die. Uh, all of a sudden, the devil makes you feel like you don't have the power to fight. All of a sudden, you have all of these thoughts coming in your head. Lord, what am I going to do? Doubt sets in. Confusion sets in. Anxiety sets in. Depression sets in. But hold your horses. Put on the spirit of God. Sometimes fear tries to set in and make us feel that what we're going through mm, is more than God can take us out of. Sometimes we get to a place where we can't see God changing this. But understand that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. We have to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We have to put on the helmet of salvation. And oh my God, I'm not going to go down to this. But when times get rough, and when times get tough, you have to put on the whole You gotta ask for what you want. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. But by faith you shall receive if you believe. So after, after, after you put on these garments and after you ask God for what you need, listen, listen. Open your ear to hear. One of the lessons I'm learning this week as God is raising me to a new level. He says, you got too much noise in your ear. You got white noise. The wall is running. Shut the wall off. The truck is running. Shut that wall off. The TV's on. Cut that power off. He says, how can you hear me when you're focused on something else? He says, I need you to get to your secret place. Where you worship me at your feet. We got to get to a secret place where we can drown out all the noise, where nothing is blocking us. And sometimes we just have to wait. Why? Because the scripture says, wait on the Lord and he shall renew your strength. Why is this so important? Because faith, according to Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let me give you another example. Luke, according to verse 7 and 9, speaks of the centurion who was over people in the army. And so there was somebody that needed healing that he was attached to. And Jesus stepped on the scene. When Jesus heard this, he marveled about it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he turned him about and said unto the people, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. What is he talking about? Because when he stepped on the scene, the man said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to enter my house. I'm not worthy for you to be in my presence. But if you just speak into the atmosphere, he said, I have enough faith. I told men to go and they went. I told men to say and they say. I told men to fight and they fought. So God, if I can tell men to move and they move, I believe you will speak and it will move. He says, I believe that your power is strong enough to move what is binding who 
I'm connected to? How many people believe that God is stronger than what is keeping that person down? God is stronger than the financial problems that you have. God is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. We must remember Matthew 9 and 21. For remember the woman with the issue of blood. Year after year after year. After year, after year, after year, after year, after year, with the same pain, the same blood flow that would not suffer. She felt the presence and saw the presence of God. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. But see, the key of this, she couldn't just reach him. She had to crawl and crawl and crawl and crawl. She had to go through the crowd. They were pushing her this way. They were pushing her that way. She had to crawl. She had to crawl. She had to push. She had to keep praying until something happened. And when she got right at the point that she could catch a glimpse of his Coattail. She said, if I could just touch. Notice what happened. Jesus said, who just touched me? For I said, that healing virtue has just went out of me. You got to get to put, you got to get to the place of desperation where you can move through the crowd. You can move through the hell. You can move through the lies. You can move through the hatred. You can move through the discrimination. You can move through the 